All right, good morning, everyone. If you'll stand with me, we'll begin with the prayer by Commissioner Hockaday, and we'll go into the pledge, and we'll get started. Pray with me. Our Holy Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, Father, for all your many blessings. Father, as we conduct this meeting, we ask for your knowledge, to give us knowledge and wisdom So, as we conduct this business. Father, we thank you for this country. We ask that you be with our leaders, guide them in all the decisions they make. Be with us now throughout this day. In Jesus Christ, holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, just a housekeeping matter. I did get a ha have a conversation with Sean Bryan from KBRO, who was discussing the quality of our uh, audio and video. Everything is good. We just need to fix one little problem. We need to get the microphones closer to the person who is speaking, especially for uh, you, Carl. I know we're trying to share a mic with that table, but if we can kind of pass it among you. And again, we're trying not only just to get people in this room to hear us. That's not the issue. But when you're trying to watch the video, we've got uh, everything is excellent. The equipment and the uh, technology is in place. We just got to get a little bit closer to the mic. All right, item number, or first of all, welcome to our first meeting of the month of November. Today is November 12th, and this is our first meeting of the month, November 12th, 2013. And I'll begin with item number one, public comments and or requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with section 551.042 of the Open Meetings Act. Is there anyone that would like to address the court on a non-agenda item? All right, item number two, consider and possibly approve minutes from our October 28th, 2013 special meeting of the court. Mr. Judge, I took a look at those and I make a motion we approve minutes. All right, I'll second that. All in favor of the approval of the October 28th, 2013 minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item number three, consider and possibly approve an interlocal agreement that will allow Titus County to participate in the Texas Effective Absentee System for Elections, the EASE Grant Project. We tabled this from uh, a month ago on the 14th of October. I'll just give you my comments on this and I'll let anyone address this. This is a difficult thing, Leonard, to find any information on. Uh, I spent a good bit of time reading what I could. I read a lot about what other states have done uh, to deal with this situation, but there is very little out there that gives me a good, clear understanding as to how this process works. And consequently, that makes me a little bit nervous. I think you shared with me that the total number of ballots that we get during a busy election related to military was approximately 75. Am I remembering that number right? Right. And um, so that would be at, at the high end. Uh, this may be a very uh, noble project here, but until I can get my arms around it, I'm having a hard time feeling comfortable about approving this. I just like voting the old-fashioned way, and this makes me a little bit nervous. If I knew more, perhaps I would be completely comfortable with this. I think that you're completely comfortable. I just haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Well, you do understand now that we do email ballots already, but what happens, like I said earlier, a lot of times uh, a soldier might have two or three different emails. The email account may be closed. We email it, uh, email it out, and they don't get it. But this website would allow them, no matter where they were, to be able to go to this website with a secure username and password and download the, the ballot. You know, and that way no military person would ever miss the opportunity to vote because it, would, it wouldn't, you know, uh, and the way the information get there is that I share the information with the, uh, with the website company and they provide information and put the sample ballots and, and put the actual ballot up there. But then again, it's just like when it's emailed to them, I email it to them, they got to print it off, sign it, and mail it back in, a, in, in an envelope signed with their signature that we compare with the application. 
this is uh, the same process, it's just the delivery is different because it would always be there on the website. They would download it, print it out, and send it back. The only difference is, is the delivery system. Instead of me emailing it, which I might can't find the email, they may have the wrong email, they made a move. Instead of me emailing it, they would get it from the website. Still to go through the same procedures, printing it out, sign it, they send it in. When they send it in, uh, they're, I turn it over to the early ballot board. They got an application for the original signatures on it. They compare those signatures with what was mailed in and that original signature and qualify that, that uh, military person to vote. So it's just really a difference in the delivery system is, is all it is. How do you know who to whom and when to email a ballot? Well, uh, about, about three years ago, they, uh, they got it approved, Congress approved that uh, the military people can notify me how they want to receive a ballot. They can say they want it by regular mail, they want it email, uh, and so well, that's what we abide by, the, the method that they said they want to receive it. And when do they notify you of that? Once and for all, forever, or every time there's an election? It's, uh, it's, it's a two-year period that the uh, application is good for two years. And uh, like I said, a lot of times we do mail them and they come back because they, they moved off somewhere else. And, and we, we, that's the reason they went to the email them because we'd mail them to a physical address and they try to get them to them like that and they moved off and we get them coming back. But when we start emailing, we you know we didn't we didn't get them it, you know they they did get delivered by email. One or two years, you said they on a, when they request a ballot. Yeah, they it they says application. One year or two years. Two years. That's good for two years. The law recently changed in the last legislative work. A citizen in Titus County to vote by mail. They could, that's good for one year. They just have to ask one time, and any election come up that year. I have to send them a ballot. That's but that's uh, not every year. It's two years. They can go two years. Two years for military. Right. Let, let me tell you what I understand about this private email, the private tech company, IT company. This is a Hey, brand. Al, would you move that? Get it <clears throat> I'm sorry. There you go. <clears throat> the DOD, because of the Democrats don't want to count the military ballots, so it didn't get back in time. So two th after the 2008 election, they... Uh, uh, come up with a plan. We had to get them out 45 days to the people who requested a ballot, 45 days prior to the election. You're required to get it out. Now, when they request the ballot, you don't send it out unless they request it, right? Have to have a That's, uh, they, they don't send it out, and they send it, and when they request a ballot, you t they, uh, they can request a ballot by email or U.S. mail, right? So you send it either no. way. Now, the request is actually a hard copy that I have on cop have on file right. in the office. That's a that's a hard copy. But on that application, when they request it, they can check they want it by email right. or you regular can, mail. You can uh, you can email that right. I understand that. Well, what happened was 2008. They, a lot of ballots didn't get counted for the military, so they passed the law, the 45 day law. So then the DoD Department of Defense decided to come up with a better way to do it. So their plan was they granted to privately owned IT companies to experiment with this stuff. And so, as you describe, you can send it to the email and stuff, but being a military uh, uh, in the service, uh, I'm very familiar, and a lot of people don't know, the first sergeant runs the company, the, the captain don't run the company, the comp company clerk does what the first sergeant says, and I don't believe that uh, soldiers are prepared to have computers with them, and I realize the Air Force might, but the Army, they're in the field. They're made to, they're trained every day to destroy something, kill somebody, or keep from getting killed. It's a daily process. I can't believe they've got a printer to answer this. And so there's so many ways that it could be fraudulent, and it's an experiment that these private companies were granted a grant. They applied for a grant. And it's five years or four years, get a lot, bunch of money to come up and experiment with these type things. And I would prefer, and I would vote uh, if I, that we don't do this. Let's let them work it out and decide who's going to do it. It's not a government uh, IT company doing this. This is a privately 
IT company that's done it. And so they've made an incentive the private companies have, and then the region that we're in, they've decided Texas up in the regions, and, uh, and Rockwall is the uh, headquarters of our region. Rockwell wants us to do this. I just think there's so many ways it could be fraudulent uh, to do it, uh, to, to, if you just let them e email. They don't have printers to start with if, if they email. Most soldiers don't. Air Force guys might. I don't know about the Navy, but I was next door to the Air Force base. They don't go out in the field. They work in offices. So they might have it. But soldiers, it's just not, it's not practical for them to have a computer with them and especially have a printer with them. And then they're going to send their email back, their vote back with an email. Now, you said they didn't before, but the uh, Rockwell guy told me that they were able, the election commissioner, the lady in Rockwell, said that they can vote by email. They can, instead of stale mail, she called it. So, I don't know, and you had said that they have to mail it back in. But anyway, I just think that uh, I'm very uncomfortable with it. I'm scared, and I agree. I, I, I think that we should let them, let them spend their money for five years or so and see how it works out would be my recommendation. So I know that Rockwell wants you in it. They want as many people in it as they can get. That, that region, that's where the region has been set up for Titus County. We're one of that several counties in northeast Texas, actually, are part of that region. And they want us in it. They, they really do. I feel it's an incentive for them for some reason. I guess this private, e, private IT company that's going to, that got the grant from the Department of Defense is, is handling. So, like I said, that's my, that's my yeah. thoughts on the, on the subject. So This is also under the uh, oversight of the Federal Boat Assistance. Uh, yeah. The, I, the private IT company has to approve yeah. everything, well, but that's that's right. Well, well, you know, the email uh, companies, uh, that's private companies too. That's not government either. When you get the email, Yahoo and all those are a private company, right? Yes. Right. But I, but I don't know what's that got to do with it. That doesn't have anything to do with the IT company setting up this ballot system to do it. They're setting up this system to do it. That This is a company like uh, uh, Google or somebody like that. They're a big company. They've applied for a government. I don't know who this, who's got got it here, but I don't, I don't we understand the Department of Defense didn't give it to one company. We might have uh, another company here in Texas, and they might have a different company in California. That's correct. There are, uh, there are different awards have been given to different states. This appears to be a state uh, decision, so there may be multiple companies involved. I have not read anything that indicates in any way, shape, or form that a ballot can be emailed back to the county, but neither have I seen it in writing that, that's telling me that that can't happen. I certainly hope we don't ever get to the point where we're emailing ballots back. If you could come up with some concise, more easily understood written information that maybe you could share with us. I'm not saying I'll never vote for this, but right now I don't know enough about it because I can't find enough information about it. And it's not that I distrust you. I'd just like to read something about what is this system doing for us, what does it get for us, how does it work before I would vote on this. What is your deadline time frame for accepting or rejecting this uh, offer to participate? They are trying to get all the counties uh, that's going to participate so we could start using it in the primaries, you know, have it ready for, for the primaries to use. So we've got some time. That was the, uh, the key to it. Okay. Well, and I did, I might add, I did have the county attorney look, looked it over and he didn't see any problem with it. The county attorney okay. didn't, didn't see any, any problem with it at all. Could you share the literature that you have on this with the commissioners or with any, well, any of us that are interested in looking at it? Well, I do have it, have it available. If, uh, I don't know if I got all of it out to them, but I, it, it's available. I, I can make it available. Okay. Like I said, Rockwall County is the lead county in this. They not only participate, but so that every county don't have to be uh, keeping up and accountable for this grant, they're going to be the one that's accountable for uh, taking care of all the paperwork on the grant. That's Rockwall County. They're the lead county in this. 
they not only thought it was a good program, they thought it was good enough that they would, would stand as the county that take care of all the paperwork on the grant. So, uh, well, let, let me ask you this. Even if we decide not to participate in this grant, does that necessarily mean that we won't that, that our that our residents that are serving overseas would not be able to get one of these ballots through this system in other words are, is our vote going to prevent that from happening or are we simply agreeing to participate in uh, a, an experiment we got a five-year five grant after this five-year grant period is up then it's charged on a prorated basis uh, depending on how many people use it in the county pay so much for the, the voters in your county to use it but now if we, if we don't participate in this grant and we want to use it, then we'd have to uh, have a separate agreement with this company and, and, and pay for it every time they use it. But right now, for the next five years, it doesn't matter how many people use it, we would cover if we sign an agreement. But after, you know, after, if we don't sign this agreement and we decide two years down the road, then we got to negotiate our own deal and then they're going to charge us every time. Uh, depending on how, how many people, how many people we use it. Okay. So until we agree to participate, our overseas Titus County residents cannot utilize this method. Okay. But I will, I will, I will, you know, I won't be sharing anything to any of the ballot information, anything to put up, put on the website, and their sample ballots, anything wouldn't be up there. If they went up there, they wouldn't find the ballots from Titus County until we sign an agreement and. And we exchange that information. Okay. But but we still have the system we you're, we're using now, and you you can still use the same system, right? Yeah, that's uh, I, if they say right. email it to them, I, I'll email it to them. Like I said, right. I and mean, that's what happens now, right? Some people want to email. They Some want it mail. They want it mailed. U.S. Right. mail right, right now. So that'll continue to happen. Uh, and the reason that this they they've given this to private companies private companies this is an enterprise for them they've got money now to try this and then if it succeeds they just say they're going to charge each county for it so I think we should make it work within within the government like we are now again so it, it's a business it's an incentive for them to come up with a good system and I'm sure that somebody will in five and, years and this may now, be a perfectly good system it's not that I disagree with the idea behind it I just don't know enough about it right. I want to know what can be and can't be done right Okay. Leonard, when's the la uh, <clears throat> the very last date or whatever? When do they need to know Rockwall County? Well, as I said, they were trying to get everything by the end of the year so it'd be ready for the, for the primary. Is is what they were what they were looking to do. Okay. It's uh, it's over 200 counties uh, that's in, in on this grant, and uh, like I said, they were trying to get everything finalized by the end of the year so it'd be ready for the primaries in February. And then they mail their ballot back, just like they have always done. Or the only difference email? is the way they receive it. They they receive it by email now, send it through email. The only difference they get it off the website. Yeah. It's if it's if it you know if it's if it's a chance for fraud, it's already a chance for fraud out and they print it out. But if a guy prints out two ballots, uh, when I emailed it to him, if he printed out twice and sent it back, we're not going to count it twice because it's, I got the application, put it with the ballot, goes into the envelope, it's sealed envelope, we give it to the early ballot boy, and they're going, they only going to count one ballot from that, from that individual, and they're going to compare those signatures to see that that individual sent it back. So, uh, you know, I don't know what more they could do getting it from the website. It, it's the same, the same process. It's electronic delivery, email versus website. You know, I mean, it's the same thing. Anybody else like to comment or ask a question? I'd like to look at it just a little bit more. Uh, technology has advanced so fast and uh, as, they, as these ballots come in, I know they go through all that and they check it and check signatures and all that stuff. So uh, what I'd like to do is just table it and let me see if, what we can get. If you'll give us information okay. that you have, uh, make us copies of it, I would appreciate it. And then maybe. Okay, I'll put a copy in all your boxes. 
Well, why don't you put, uh, is it a real thick, large document? How, is it something maybe you could put one copy in there in the commissioner's office and we'll let we can all read it? It may be about eight pages. Oh, that's not bad. Pages. Okay. Well, yeah, get us, get us all a copy if you would, okay. please. I can do it. I will put this back on the uh, final November meeting agenda. I think we can commit to being informed enough to make a vote by then? Yes. Okay. okay, I've got a motion by Commissioner Fields to table this matter. Second. Second by Commissioner Hinton. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Leonard. I, I know you're, you mean well, and just get, let us get up to speed as you are, and perhaps we can get this done. Wait a minute. Sir. You said I, I, all in favor, aye? Of, of tabling. Of table and then not table. Oh, table. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The vote. The vote I'm, was to. I'm the vote was to table. It, but okay. So we have a no vote to right. table. You're ready to say right. no on this completely. Right. All right. Let's indicate that as a, a four to one with Commissioner Riddle uh, voting no. All right. Item number four: Consider and possibly approve a resolution to cast votes to elect directors for the Titus County Appraisal District. We do this uh, each year, and it's time to do that. Let me read over these names here of, the, of those that are included on the candidate list. Mr. Randy Beckett, Mr. Al Burkhalter, Mr. David Greider, Mr. Ricky McElroy, Mr. Ezell McGill, Mr. Bobby Parr, Mr. Hewlin Mike Reynolds, Mr. David Smith, Mr. G. Wake Wood. Those that are currently serving are Beckett, McGill, Parr, Reynolds, and Smith. So the newly added candidates are Al Burkhalter, David Greider, Ricky McElroy, and Wake Wood. Randy Beckett has shared with me that he would prefer not to serve this year. He needs a, a break, although he did not remove his name in time. He will honor whatever uh, we choose to do. And so we're responsible with our votes for approximately one person out of this. How much most of we cast our vote for Ricky McElroy? Okay, Commissioner uh, Hockaday makes a motion that we cast all of our votes, which is 1,103 total votes, approximately a, a fifth, as I recall. And your motion is to cast all of those votes for Mr. Ricky McElroy. Is that, the, is that the only choice? Oh. Well, we have, again, that's, that's just a motion we've made here. We can come to whatever conclusion that we want to come to. So only one, one of them? We well, that's, that's, it, that's his motion. So I'll, I'll wait for a second. If not, we'll, I'll okay. look for another suggestion. Well, I'm sure that's already planned. Excuse me? Okay. I need a second for us second. to proceed with this. A second by Commissioner Fields. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, uh, Commissioner Riddle and myself opposed, so that is a 3-2 vote. All right, item number, if you'll set that aside and I'll sign that. Item number five, consider and possibly approve the addition of Jan Greenley to the Titus County Welfare Board. Uh, the Welfare Board has obviously suggested and uh, asked if we would approve uh, Ms. Greenlee's nomination. She has gone through the background check with no problems whatsoever, and so they need our stamp of approval if we would like to see Ms. Greenlee appointed to that board. Motion by Commissioner Hockaday and second by Commissioner Fields to approve the addition of Jan Greenlee to the Welfare Board. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And there are none. All right, item number six, consider and possibly make a decision on removal or encapsulation of asbestos at the vacant annex property. Uh, Chris Basham offered to be here this morning. Uh, I told him I thought I could explain this. Let me tell you where we are. 
this only relates to asbestos at the vacant annex property, that roughly 7,000 uh, feet over there on the west side. He has gotten uh, one estimate of between 20 and $30,000. Chris thought that was high. He thinks he can get it, get it lower, but he has not gotten a firm uh, price yet that is any lower than that. Uh, that would be for a complete removal of any asbestos once and for all. Uh, encapsulation is a term used where we leave the asbestos in place and we work around it, uh, which is not free. It comes with a cost, too, and in Chris Basham's opinion, uh, it could be a significant cost. There have been at least two previous uh, encapsulation attempts for the asbestos over there. So again, that is also a possibility. His recommendation uh, would be to get rid of it once and for all so that that does not hinder or force you to make uh, decisions in construction that uh, have to work around that existing asbestos. Uh, again, he thinks he can get better, but uh, his suggestion would be to give him the authority to spend up to $30,000 for removal of that asbestos and he will come back to us with uh, the best price that he can find when he has had a chance to get some more uh, bids on that. Discussion? You said to give him the authority to go up to 30000 if, if he can't get the price bettered, the one company he's worked with uh, that he knows can get the job done has given him a price of between twenty and thirty thousand dollars, not to exceed thirty thousand dollars. He thought that was a little bit high. He thinks, in fact, he's quite confident he can get it better than that. But if we want to make a decision today so that he can get the process going, uh, I'll give him approval of up to thirty thousand dollars. If you would prefer to wait and delay it a little bit longer until he has some more figures, uh, we can certainly do that. Considering the magnitude of the, the size of that uh, building over there and the magnitude of the project, he thought that this price was not bad considering the, the scope of the project, but nonetheless, he, he was a little disappointed it was that high. I'd rather wait till he, he uh, explores all of his. Okay. okay. That would be my, my decision to wait and okay. let him. All right, motion by Commissioner Hockaday I that we table this. I second it. Second to table this. All those in favor of tabling this decision on removal or encapsulation of asbestos say aye. Uh -huh. And opposed, and there are none. Uh, speaking on this renovation over there, Leonard brought something to my attention this morning. I don't know when he's planning on starting anything at the, at the Ratliff building, but he's got that primary coming up in February, I mean in March. Um, we probably don't need to start any construction down there until after that's over with. It's, you know, that's what he and I was talking about this morning. You might want to get in on that discussion with him. And no, I, I, I am in total agreement on that. And I think that Chris will be able to, you know, things are obviously moving slower than we had hoped. And he can be working on, you know, the demolition of across the street if that's what we choose to do. Or he can say, you know what, if you'll let me get started by the first of the year or whatever, then, you know, I can be done in time. But we won't put uh, disruption of the voter administration at risk for that primary. Okay. You know, there's no point in doing that. That actually a question, Leonard? All right, item number seven, consider and possibly approve a change to the health care insurance plan related to out-of-network ambulance charges. I'm going to explain this as best I understand it. I know that Diane would like to explain uh, her personal experience with this, but um, in this particular situation, we had a, a uh, not a denial of a claim, but the claim, which, as you can imagine, for uh, an, an ambulance ride was fairly substantial. And our plan determined this out-of-town, out-of-state ambulance ride to be out-of-network because it was. The company providing that service was out-of-network and therefore was only uh, subject to 60% payment as opposed to 90% had that ambulance provider been in our network. And so it obviously ended up costing 
our covered employee uh, more, and I don't know the exact figure. When I inquired of, uh, of CAPS about this and talked with uh, our, our uh, liaison with UMR, the explanation was, yes, that is correct. They paid as the plan had indicated. And I said, well, what is, is this plan different from our previous plan? She said, no, had it, had it been under the uh, other uh, Health First plan, it would have been identical. There has not been any change to how much would be paid on an out-of-network ambulance charge. And so the question is, do you want to make a change to this or not? But first, let me hear from Diane if you'd like to address them. You can pull that microphone over there to you if you'd like. Uh, well, my story began on um, July the 18th. Um, my husband hadn't seen his son in two years, so we flew to um, California. We landed in San Francisco on Wednesday afternoon. And then on um, Thursday morning at 5.30, I decided I was thirsty, so I was going to go get a drink of water. Well, I went down the hall, and um, they have a dog, and they're afraid the dog would bother us, so they put up a gate. Well, instead of me trying to figure out how to get the gate down to get up, the, get through the hall, I just climbed, I was just going to climb over it. I got one foot over and the other foot caught in my pajamas. Well, um, there was also a hall that went out to the front door. When, when the, I, my pajama bottom got caught, my feet went out from under me and I landed on the corner of this other wall, cut a big gash in my head, and, um, and then I hit the floor and cracked my shoulder in three places. And when I hit that floor, the pain was so bad, I could not even move. So uh, the daughter-in-law, she called the ambulance because I couldn't move. And it took them two morphine shots just to get me off of the floor. One had to lift my, throw my arm over and the other one had to lift my back up just to get me on the stretcher. And then there was a puddle of blood on the floor because, um, because of the big gash in the back of my head. Well, whenever you're in a desperate situation like that, you just landed. You're, you're two hours, we had to drive two hours to Modesto from, Cal I mean, from San Francisco, that's where we landed. And we knew nobody out there, and we knew nothing. I mean, and um, anyway, so when she called 911, well, when you call 911, they send the ambulance that's available. It, you know, they just, they don't call in or ask you what kind of insurance you have or, you know, are you going to be covered or anything like that. They just send whatever ambulance is available. So, um, anyway, I just feel that when it's an emergency, like if it was a car wreck or whatever it is, and, and an ambulance is called and I think, I think our insurance needs to be changed to cover that uh, because you have no control over who they're going to send. And it, um, also, well, at least the insurance was in network. I mean, the hospital was in network. But, I mean, I'd have been worse off if the hospital hadn't been in network. And I think if an ambulance has, has to be called and you're taken to a hospital, I think in an emergency situation, I think our insurance ought to cover the ambulance and the hospital if it's, you know, because it, I mean, it's not going, I mean, it probably don't happen too often, but I mean, one of our other um, employees could have a car wreck and it'd be, you know, a life and death situation. And I just feel like that that ought to be covered. I mean, as far as me personally, I don't take any medicine on a daily basis. I mean, the only insurance money I spend is like per vintage. And this one time when I needed some help, it didn't happen. So thank you. Um, let me try to give you two my comments that would support both sides of this. In, in, in Diane's support, uh, in my discussion with Chris Kaplinger with UMR, she did say that it was not uncommon for a plan to include all ambulance providers as, by definition, 
in network. So that, that is not something that's a stretch. It's not that this is, that our plan is designed the way all plans typically are. She says she has seen it both ways. On the other hand, uh, we have to consider, are we going to make tweaks to our plan that improve it and make it better and better every time we run into a situation where uh, we deem that an employee uh, you know, came, came out at the short end of the stick. And so that we just continually to, we continually pile on more and more costs onto the plan. Um, I don't have any other comments. I, th I think this is a pretty clear case. Diane had no control over this, um, but nonetheless, it ended up costing you roughly, what'd you tell me? About $430 more as a result of it being out of network than being in network. Okay. Well, like I have shared with Diane, and I'll make my personal statement, I, I, I'm sorry that this is the case, but nonetheless, I think we've got a top-notch plan, and it's not going to cover everything every time we want it, and I'm not in favor of getting in the habit of making this plan change every time we have something that comes up. But again, keep in mind that uh, this is not an uncommon. This is a. This is not necessarily an uncommon situation. There are lots of plans that would treat this out of town, out of network, as an in network covered at 90 percent. And if we were to change it, we wouldn't uh, be making a change that wasn't uh, fairly common throughout. Well, Judge, I, you know, I I agree with with what she's saying. You really don't have control when you're out there in the public and, and they were in a, even another state and you really don't uh, uh, have time to go and check out who's under this or that. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only time this has ever really happened in another state or, or something of that nature. I don't have a problem with changing it. I, I, I think if you need a, you got 911 call, which is what happened, and uh, you have no control. They're going to, the dispatchers are going to send whoever they can get there and get there the fastest. It's my understanding, and I talked to you a little bit about this. Uh, uh, what you did was they wanted to do surgery and all this, and you decided you wanted to let it see if it could heal itself a little bit. And if you did do it, you wanted to do it at home, which was, to me, uh, uh, if you were in that kind of pain, it was hard to do. You, I'm sure you was wanting something done, but uh, you did not have surgery. You did not have that. And I don't know what it would have cost, but it had been in the thousands of dollars. Uh huh. That 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 you just country girl and tough and well, let it get I'm well on its own. Uh, you know, I, I did my therapy mostly at home. You know, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm sympathetic to, to, to your, but I don't want to start changing these hospital plans every time somebody has a problem. I don't think that's the way you operate. We, we, if we're going to change it, we need to make wait till next year when we redo our plan and then make that change. And, you know, I'm sympathetic to you, Diane, for, for your call, but I just don't think you tweet something every time you got a little problem. And, and that's a big problem to you, and I understand that. And, and I, would, I would vote no to changing the, the plan. Okay, is that a motion? I'll make that motion, yes. Okay, that's a motion by Commissioner Hockaday that we do not make any changes to the health insurance plan related to out-of-network ambulance charges. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Oh, I'm sorry, second? You're yeah, kind of rushing it. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor of making no changes say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Okay. And Commissioner Fields votes no. Okay. Thank you, Diane, for bringing that to me and handling that the way that you did. Um, item number eight, consider and possibly approve uh, times for our second monthly meeting for Commissioner's Court. And perhaps I've limited too much by saying second monthly meeting. We can 
change that later if we want to, but we, uh, the last time we voted on this, we approved going through the end of the year for having the 6 p.m. time frame established for our second monthly meeting of the month. And before we go into January, we need to make a decision on how we're going to, uh, what times we're going to meet going forward. How about the motion meeting. we made out at every, every uh, commissioner's court meeting at 9 o'clock on okay. the second and fourth I, Mondays? When we voted on this last meeting, I said that uh, I'd like to make a motion that we have them all at 6 o'clock at night so the taxpayer. You said we weren't voting on the times, we were voting on the days. Correct. But on this agenda, you said the second monthly meeting of the month. Correct. Well, I'll make a motion. And we, can, and we can certainly move that. That's why I was saying I think that I put an unfair limitation on there if we wanted to consider having all meetings uh, in the evening. And for that reason, we could table that in order to enable us to make that decision uh, at the next meeting. So any change we make today is not going to go into effect until, uh, until the month of January. But I have, I have a motion on the floor right now to make the second, which means both meetings, at 9 o'clock in the morning. A second. I have a second by Commissioner Hinton. Comments? Discussion. In the, during the winter, especially when the, uh, it's 6 o'clock and it gets, gets, starts to get dark and stuff, I barely I've had several people tell me they could not come at night because of uh, uh, they had trouble driving and things of that nature. And I don't have a problem with uh, meeting, but I'd rather do it in the spring or in the summertime at night. And uh, that gives our, uh, especially our older citizens, opportunity to be here. Uh, I know we got a motion in a second. Uh, It might be something we can look at uh, in the winter months I think we need to meet at nine o'clock in the morning in the summertime I think we can uh, uh, alternate it every other time my comments would be the, the same hardship for someone not being able to come to an evening meeting would apply to an employed person not able to come to a morning meeting and so I, I don't I think that those arguments cancel out at best I think that the uh, split times has proven to be a good uh, compromise I know that Commissioner Riddle would like to see all meetings at night and he has his own reasons which uh, are, are, are good reasons but nonetheless I, f I find that the morning meeting at the first of the month and the evening meeting at the second of the month are a good compromise and we've continued to see good crowds turn out at night um, for those that uh, can't come perhaps they can make uh, arrangements with friends that they know will be coming and so I will not uh, I will not support that but nonetheless I do have a motion in a second and so we need to take a vote on that before considering anything else all, and would that be for the duration of the year, Commissioner Hockaday? Well, we can change it any time you want to put it back on the agenda. Okay. That's, that's my motion for now. Okay. The motion by Commissioner Hockaday is that uh, for the time being, we make all meetings of Commissioner's Court on the second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Oppose. I oppose. Commissioner right. Fields. On this, you're Thomas, you're making a motion to, to change it now or to? January the 1st. Jan January 1. Okay. Yes. I, 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 I personally would like to have it where uh, that, that second meeting of the month in the summer months that we can meet then. Uh, the winter months, I'd rather not. Well, we can reconsider that, but let's complete this vote. Back on the agenda anytime you want to. Right now. 
Okay, I have I have right now two two Commissioner Fields. You're our deciding vote on this matter for right now. And again, if this does not pass, or if it does pass, we can reconsider a different motion if you so choose. Like okay. like Commissioner Hockaday said, it's not that this is set in stone. We can always come back and change this later. But nonetheless, uh, that is that is the uh, the vote at this time. Whether or not we're going to make all meetings at 9 a.m. No. Okay. Uh, would there I'd be like any other motions now? This one is not passed. I'd like a motion that we uh, uh, meet during uh, the daytime at 9 o'clock, uh, January, February, March, April, and then in May, June, July, August, September, meet one meeting in the, in the morning, that first meeting, and the second meeting. Do it six o'clock at night. Well, let me remind you the time changes in early March, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, by the time late March comes along, it's going to be light until certainly uh, seven o'clock, anyway. But nonetheless, the uh, commissioner feels a motion. Yeah, let's get some uh, public comment on this, Tony. Tony, can I get you to grab one of these mics? I want to be sure we record you for posterity. Yes, you made the point very, you made it very clear that <clears throat> people get out and go to church in the dark. They go shopping in the evenings when it's dark. I think that's a cop out. That the meetings at nine o'clock. Our commissioners are paid a good salary. They're going to hold commissioner's court during their work time, their work time, and not in the evening. And I understand they want to be home. But you look at this crowd compared to any evening crowd we've had. Our evening crowds are larger. It's hard for me to come during the day, but I can make it in the evening. And I'm a little disappointed that you all chose to make this vote on a morning session instead of the evening session where the people come out and have voiced concerns. And I know the historical society, would they have had those numbers in the morning? Would you have had those numbers for those people who wanted the speed limit changed? No. And so I just think, you know, we go back to this point, this policy process, the, it's the public's court. It's the public's it's just like our federal government. It's not the government that controls, it's the people's government. The same thing here, and if we're not gonna be functioning in it, then you know, we're gonna go back to the old idea that the people aren't important. And if those people that I see here in the evening time outnumber this group this morning in the other commissioners meetings I've been to in the morning, there's no comparison. And I'm disappointed in the boat. I'm disappointed in the idea that people aren't going to come out at night. I'd like to correct one thing he said. He's talking about our work day. Our work day is from is 24 hours a day. It's not just during the daylight hours. It's night and day. And another thing, I counted the people after the, the speed limit folks left last week. It was 15 left in the audience. It's eight here. here. It was eight here. It's nine here now. So you know you got half as many you got half as many as you had last year. I'm not gonna worry about that I understand that. But still I had to meet with parents and I had to meet with people when it's convenient for the people, not when it's convenient for them. This commissioner's court needs to meet when it's convenient for the people, not for themselves. Okay, pull up that mic. I'm going to require anybody that speaks to have a mic in front of you. I understand that uh, there are certain people that work and if they want to come to the meetings, then they need to have some night nice meetings. There are also people that do business with this county, whether they're contractors or whatever, that it's they want to come when they're at work because that's part of their work. They're making bids, they're doing whatever. So there are also people that need to come here when they're at work. And it's a hardship for them to come at night. They're going to make money off the county. They need to come with the county commissioners. I can't. I can't hear. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean that's your opinion. I just, I just think it's a fair way to do it. Have a meeting day, one meeting at night. 
Okay, let's get uh, microphones in front of anybody that wants to speak or come up to the podium, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't see the problem with continuing the compromise situation for now, one in the morning, one in the evening. Uh, some evening meetings are hard for me because I have livestock at home to take care of, but, you know, I can most of the time get away from the clinic to come in the morning. But I think taking away uh, one night meeting is a big mistake, and I think it's like Tony said, it's going backwards because you do have taxpayers being able to come and voice their opinion when you meet at night that you didn't have before. Um, I mean, I, I think it reflects a little more transparency up here, and there hasn't been a lot of transparency up here in a long time. Emily, would you hand that microphone, please, to Emily? Hey, thanks. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm here this morning, but I haven't been here for many mornings before this. Um, but I have been at evening meetings. And um, all I can speak for is the meetings that I've been to. And they have been, I would guess, a lot more in the evening than what we see today. You know, the people have come out for the evening meetings because they want to be a part of what's going on in our county. Thank you. The, 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 I've been at all the meetings. The two evening meetings that I've there were a lot of people at, those people had an agenda item that they wanted to talk about. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't, the people with the speed limit may have showed up at the morning meeting too. And, and in the speed limit deal, they didn't even have to show up. There wasn't any dissent anywhere. That, that they could have. But the point is to have the right. Certainly to they be do. Here. Certainly they do. And they have the right to be here anytime. You can be okay. here. Let, let let Carl finish, and then Tony, I'll be glad to let you comment well, again. That's all I want to say. Okay, Tony, would you have anything else? Anyone else? Let me, make, let me make a statement. We had budget hearings. This is my first time. We had budget hearings at 9 o'clock in the morning. We didn't have budget hearings so the citizens, the taxpayers could be here. We had budget hearings, and guess who come to the meeting? Fill up this room. County employees. They could close their offices, and I'm sure they all got paid and come to the meeting. The public had to work and pay the taxes. And of course, we raised our taxes on a day in the meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning so that uh, they weren't here in order to give them a raise, the public employees that come to the meetings. I think it's painted a very, very clear picture of government taking care of government, just like Tony says. And I think it's really wrong. I think it's morally wrong. And I think it's ethically wrong for us to do that. We should have the meetings. When people can come, I realize it's an inconvenience for you and your employees, Carl, and it's inconvenient for uh, all the employees of the county. And I understand that, but we're servants. We're here to serve the public, and we've made this stuff a privileged job. And, and I think that it's really wrong, and I don't know what else to say it, but if we made it all at 6 o'clock at night, anybody could come. They know it's 6 o'clock at night. And it would, be, it would send a message that we don't set up here and have everything decided. And I've heard it said in this courtroom, oh, we get through an hour and a half. We really did good because, in my opinion, we already discussed it, the commissioner's court had before the meeting. So I, and I feel like that uh, probably still happens a lot. But uh, anyway, I just uh, I, I think it's, it's, we're, we're servants of the people. And I think we should have them at night. And I realize there's some people is inconvenience especially the county employees.
but we do everything for the county employees. Well, in my, in my office's case, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with not being well. for that because they just, if they work overtime on that Monday and then they just take off early on Friday, then some we don't get into overtime. But. Well. That's that's but, true, but but, but that's, that, that's that's not why. I mean, I, I'm kind of uh, and, uh, you can meet well, that's, in the that's, middle. Uh, but, you know, there's people. There, there's arguments for both ways, and, what? It's, and it's not because they're I, trying I to didn't meet. Hear you. I didn't hear what meeting. you said. You say that again. Uh, I, I agree with Barbara. I think you ought to have some meetings today and some meetings tonight. I don't think that's a problem. But you're, you're not I elected. I assure you that I, I don't, I've not talked to any taxpayers that thought we were trying to pass stuff up here without anybody knowing what's going on. Anybody can come to these meetings if they want to. Uh, but you're not elected either. Well, you're, yeah, and you, you're, you don't have you, you don't have a say so. You're I a district citizen. I, 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 I think it's even. Citizen. I'm just speaking like yeah. the rest of the citizens. Well, you, you do that often. Okay, where are we? <laughs> Your motion was to have meetings, one in the morning and one at night, with the exception of, uh, I believe you used the term, the winter months, which would be January, February, March, and April. You would have all meetings at nine in the morning. That, yes. Does that sound right? All right. May, June, July, August, and September. One, the first meeting in the morning, second meeting at night at six. And then you'd revert back in October. Yes. Okay, that's the motion. Anyone want to second that? Okay, we're kind of stuck here, fellas. Tell you what, I'm going to make a motion that we table this vote until next meeting. That'll be a 6 p.m. meeting, and we can hear some more pros and cons. Hopefully those that oppose the nighttime meetings will find somehow some way to come and explain to us why we shouldn't have night meetings. I'm confident there, there will be some that come here that will explain to you why we should. All right, motion is to, yes. Anyone else care to comment? I've been here once to see She just asking if, if you wanted to make a comment as to why you wanted all meetings to be at 9 in the morning. No particular reason. Just like them in the morning. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. Anyone going to second that? Table table it, so the next meeting? Yes. I second it. Okay, I got a motion and a second. All those in favor of tabling this vote until the second of second meeting of the month of November, say aye. 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 All right. Opposed? No. We've got one no vote by Commissioner Hockaday. We'll table that until our next meeting. All right, on to travel and seminars. I've got the first three here are for employees of Mr. Coburn. This would include Kim Beard, John Mark Coburn, and Paul Lindsay, who are requesting to attend Open Government Conference 2013 in Austin on the 9th and 10th of December. This would involve travel the day before on the 8th and return on the 10th. There's a $150 registration cost for each one. This is indicated as optional training. There are uh, total accommodations at the hotel for Kim, Paul, and John Mark. Uh, this looks like two days worth. That'd be the evening of the 8th and the 9th totals $552 that covers all three of them. They are uh, proposing taking a uh, county vehicle, I guess that would be Paul's vehicle, and asking for gas only. Then they have requested three days of 
per diem at $40 per day, which I believe will need to be adjusted to two and a half days since that first day is a travel day. Those are the first three. The uh, fourth is a request from uh, County Clerk Diane to attend annual uh, 59th Annual Vital Statistics Conference in Austin. She indicates this is yes, it is mandatory training. The dates of the training, December 11, 12, and 13, with travel on the 10th the day before. Registration cost of $180. Meal cost uh, three and a half times forty dollars would be a hundred forty dollars. Uh, hotel accommodations at four hundred fourteen dollars, and total uh, travel cost based on the miles at three hundred forty-five dollars. That brings a grand total of a thousand seventy-nine dollars. Those are the four travel requests that I have. I'll make a motion to approve. Go ahead. Uh, motion by Commissioner Riddle and second by Commissioner Hinton to approve the travel and seminars. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Item number 10, approve oral and written reports of county officials. Anybody want to jump out there? Make a motion to approve written reports. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hinton, second by Commissioner Fields. All in favor of approving oral and written reports, say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 11, consider possibly approve the treasurer's report. Okay, a motion by Commissioner Hinton. I'll make a second. All those in favor of approval of the Treasurer's report say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item number 12, uh, approved budget amendments. No budget amendments this time. Item number 13, signed pay orders and approved payments. Make a motion for our bills. Motion by Commissioner Hinton to pay all outstanding bills. Sorry. It's all right. The next, I'm waiting on the next. I just need a second. 
Second. Second. All right, second by Commissioner Fields. All in favor of approving uh, uh, payment of our bills, say aye. Aye. Opposed? There's none. Closing comments. I'm going to start down here on the right with Commissioner Riddle. Any closing comments? And then we're going to go into it. We're going to talk about executive session after this. Okay. I, uh, is there any way on the uh, budget amendments that we could put what it is or, or, or no, if we have any, and what it what it is or on the agenda? So have a little preparation. Yeah, rather. Huh? Yeah. When, when do you complete your work on those, typically? Some of them you do, right. That's the reason I'm at, I, that's the reason I asked that question, because it, it really is nice to know, rather than just have it handed to us here, up here, I, when you do have those, you spoil it. When I, when I have them, I'll, I'll do this, uh, Mr. I'll try to always have those available to y'all by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. so you can have them there to look at them if you have any questions. And, and let's maybe allocate a little more time for for better explanation because some of those figures are kind of can get rather large and and going one way or another yeah and, and even if we're sitting there I don't have a problem with it because I'll ask you if I'm if I'm not sure of something but for somebody with a non-accounting background I think it would help to get uh, to at least provide that for them and then you know if you have some questions check with me or with Carl uh, but then on the morning of it maybe we can get a more uh, in-depth explanation of exactly what's going on and I realize that you know 90 percent of these are relatively simple although the dollar figures may be large there's an easy and clear explanation but let's be sure that everybody has a good clear explanation had one back when I first started is that I never had did dev did normally when you put them in there earlier I can figure it out a little time but they had one there was one back there that I never did figure out where we took some of that money out of that heart bluff project we took something out of precinct four and put a hundred thousand dollars over in there and I, I was confused and I, I would have liked to have known what it was but I was brand new on the job that was last January probably and uh, I never did understand it. And I some of these. Where, uh, huh? where Commissioner Hockaday took some of his unused fund balance, for lack of a better word, carryover, whatever you want to call it, that, that he had built up through the years, and he, he transferred it over to the uh, private fund, to the library fund to help pay for any future. That particular project is to pay for the turning lanes at Arts Club and also to widen the road. Going out to Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill High School. That part has not been done yet. And, and uh, we haven't got the clearance from TikTok to handle that part yet. The Hartsville Library is in process. 
Well, I, I didn't mean to get. Yeah, that's. What I didn't mean to get make this make this a long question. No, I think that that's a reasonable point that you bring up because that is somewhat of a nebulous agenda item that uh, I don't want to to slide it by anybody up here or slide it by anybody uh, in the audience, uh, especially if there's somebody thinking, well, they're just. Uh, you know, they can go over budget, they'll just pull money out of one fund and put it into another. We'll make sure that we give a good explanation on those and uh, either before or during the meeting. Okay, did we, uh, we did vote on that. Item number, uh, we're, just do we're just doing closing comments. Yeah, I lost track there. Commissioner Fields, anything? Uh, don't have anything, just, uh, it's gonna get cold, I think, tonight. How did, I, think, I think all of us had a lot of trees down this week with big limbs. So. Did they have the uh, jamboree? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. It was one of those wet weeks. That the turnout was not as big as it's been in the past, but the quality was excellent. Good picking and good singing. Okay. All right. Commissioner Hinton. I have nothing to do. Commissioner Hockaday. No, sir. Thank you. All right. All right. Item number uh, 15 before we adjourn. Uh, I'm asking for an executive session, and, the per and I do not uh, expect any action to come out of this. We're going to have a, a, a conference call with uh, the folks that are responsible for purchasing all of the right-of-way for our loop project. And we've got, I think, two or three that are still uh, have not been absolutely settled. He's just going to bring us all up to date on where we stand with these. We have not had a conversation about this in... Uh, Gosh, I think it was right after the first of the year when we were given an update. And some things have been closed out and finished. And I just asked him uh, to share with all of the commissioners. He has already shared it with me where we are on all of these right-of-way projects. Um, and I think it's all good news, but I just wanted everybody up to speed. So we will, we're going to, because there's no phone in here, we're going to step into my office where I've got a speaker phone. And... Uh, Joyce, if you'll bring your recorder in there with us so we can record what's going on in there, and then I'll ask you to maybe cut that part of the meeting out and make a separate recording and put it on a disc for me so that we can store that. Okay. I'm going to leave the video and audio running back here. If anybody wants to hang around, again, I don't anticipate any action. We'll come back in here and simply adjourn. So for those of you that decide to leave now, have a great day. Stay warm for those of you that want to stick around. I don't know how long we'll be. 20 minutes? I'm just guessing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We are back in, uh, in open session. It is now 11.25 a.m. on Tuesday morning, November 12, 2013. And I'm ready to uh, hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Hockaday. Second. Second. Thank you.